Man, the shirt is friggin' green. <laughs> Happy St. Paddy's Day, everybody. Today I'm reviewing a bottle that I've had for a while. It's the Jameson 18-year Bow Street. It's a cast strength Jameson. That's right, this is the missing marshmallow in my Lucky Charms. It is not the purple horseshoes. So pour some green beer or throw some Irish whiskey in your coffee. Let's open up this beast on the mash and drum. What's up, folks? I am Jason C. from the Master and Drum. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Irish whiskey, as I've mentioned, is one of the fastest growing spirit categories globally with a consistently rising demand. Uh, Irish whiskey is experiencing a very strong renaissance within Ireland as well, going from just about four distilleries in 2013 to about 18 distilleries and more and more planned on the way. Globally, though, there's probably no brand bigger or well-known than Jameson. Jameson's Irish Whiskey has a long history which they are very proud of. The famous distillery is located on Bow Street in the Smithfield area. Now the distillery was first opened in 1780, but not under the same name we all know today. It was called the Steins Family Bow Street Distillery up until a Scotsman by the name of John Jameson stepped off the boat in Ireland and changed the Irish whiskey business forever. John Jameson became general manager of the distillery in 1786, and by 1805, he took full ownership of the distillery, which he also expanded. So in 1810, the name of the Irish whiskey was changed to the John Jameson & Sons Irish Whiskey Company, or Jameson's Irish Whiskey for short. Jameson, though, had stiff competition, as at the time, he was not the only distillery in Dublin. In fact, there were many other distilleries and many others like Jameson who wanted to impress and stand out from the crowd, but Jameson quickly grew and became Ireland's biggest and one of the world's biggest distillers of whiskey by the 19th century. But the 20th century brought some very hard times for Jameson's and distillers everywhere. After Ireland declared its independence from Britain, the distillery began to struggle. A trade war with Britain meant increased tariffs on exporting to one of the distillery's biggest markets. Couple that with prohibition here in America, the company's largest market was cut off. All right, before we finish out the story here, I want to get this poured because it is a cast strength offering here. Oof, that's a nice color for a Jameson. Fast forward to 1966 and to ensure the name and legacy of Jameson's lived on, the company decided to merge with previous rivals, the Cork Distillers Company and John Powers to form the Irish Distillers Group. In 1976, the new Middleton Distillery was opened, which meant, sadly, the Bow Street Distillery closed its doors for the last time until the new Visitor Center opened its doors in 1997. Today, Jameson is the best-selling Irish whiskey in the world, and the legacy of the Bow Street Distillery and founder, John Jameson, continues to live on. Now, this bottle, which was first launched in 2018, is Jameson's rarest release and is bottled once per year at cast strength and pays homage to that original Bow Street location. So the 18-year Bow Street is made from single pot still Irish whiskey and single grain Irish whiskey aged for at least 18 years from a mix of ex-bourbon and ex-sherry barrels. But the best things you get out of this whiskey, non-chill filtration, bottled at full cast strength, and after the blend is put into those first fill ex-bourbon casks, the barrels are moved to the warehouse at the original Jameson Distillery on Bow Street to marry and finish for at least six months. 
So if you've been walking around and wondering what pure, unadulterated Jameson tastes like at full proof, with no filtering and all the oils and esters all left in the bottle, here is your chance. Now, this bottle is a bottle, this batch is at 110.2 proof. That's cast strength. I got this for about 200 bucks. All right, let's dive in here, guys. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're trying any Irish whiskeys uh, for St. Patty's Day today, or uh, you just don't like Irish whiskey. Let me know. Ooh, first thing that jumps out is banana. A lot of people don't realize that when Irish whiskeys hit a certain age, when higher aged Irish whiskeys start getting these very complex tropical fruit flavors, that I think is what makes it some of the best, um, some of the best whiskeys that people don't really get to try because either they just think all Irish whiskeys like Jameson or Redbreast, or because they've just never been interested enough to try something at that high age. But higher age Irish whiskey can be absolutely fantastic. Kind of looking at this bottle, I love the, uh, it gives you a little copper tag here uh, on the top of the bottle as well. It's a, it's a really nice looking bottle. Yep, banana and pineapple. A Little bit of a chocolate note too there. Like a milk chocolate, not dark, but milk chocolate. Starting to get a little bit of a coconut as well. So, I mean, again, tropical flavors in these higher aged uh, Irish whiskeys really come to the forefront. You get some of the barley. You get honey, which is a pretty, pretty traditional note I get in Irish whiskey. And you obviously it rounds out with some nice sweet oak. I mean, it's again, it's, it's more tropical note forward here. Banana, coconut, pineapple, a little bit of chocolate though to round it out. Let's try it, here we go. It's a shame this only releases once a year because it's delicious. On the palate is where that sherry influence comes in. You get, it's still tropical somewhat, but man, it's laced with like these strawberry, raspberry notes coming in. Maybe a little hint of raisin too, but man, it's peppery. It's, it's oily, but not as oily as I maybe thought it would be. I mean, when you're comparing it to regular Jameson's, I mean, anything is oilier than that, but. Yeah, the sherry influence is really prevalent on the palate. You still get those tropical notes. I still get in the pineapple. But yeah, the, the sherry notes in this it really come into the forefront. I'm still getting a little hint of a banana here on the finish. A little more of that coconut. A lot of spice. It's a, it's a beautifully balanced Irish whiskey. I mean, I know it's 200 bucks, and there's a lot of great Irish whiskeys that are, um, if you guys haven't checked out my series on Irish whiskeys, you definitely need to do that. Uh, so far, I've done single malt. There's four categories of Irish whiskey. I've gone through single malts, I've gone through single pot still, and I've gone through some blends. I still need to do single grain, uh, which is a little bit harder to find, at least in my area. Go for, actually, this contains some single grain. There's that copper pot still bite that it has on this, which I definitely, I definitely expected, but I'm not getting it until I, I'm taking a few more sips of this. The tropical notes are still there, the coconut, a little bit of banana. It rounds out with some really nice red sherry notes, a little bit of chocolate, maybe some raisin, and then that oak, the oak spice and that copper pot still uh, spice that is so, you know, just prevalent with really good uh, Irish whiskey, just kind of rounds it out. Um, it, it's one of those things where, uh, unfortunately, these are pretty hard to get. But if you see this at a bar, if you're if you're out today celebrating celebrating St. Patty's Day, and and they have this, uh, you know, wherever you're at, whether you're hanging out with friends or if you're at a bar, get a pour of this and try it because if you haven't had Jameson's at cash strength, um, it, it's it's definitely well worth it. Again, two hundred bucks. It's released once a year. If you love those flavors that I mentioned, it's definitely worth the grab, I think, especially because there's just not much of this cask rank Jameson that goes around. Their regular offerings are, you know, they're watered down to 80 proof. There's usually a lot of flavored Jamesons as that, that's out there. They do have a couple of special releases that are out there as well. But this one, this is the one you want. Mm. And it even gets easier to drink and it even gets a little bit more of that spice on the back end the more you sip this. It's just, it's a beautiful whiskey. I wish all Jamesons tasted like this, but 
If you're a big fan of Jameson's, this is definitely a must try or even a must have. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review for the Jameson's 18 year Bow Street Edition uh, here on St. Patty's Day. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this before. Uh, what are some of your other favorite Irish whiskeys that you'll be drinking today on St. Patty's Day? And uh, as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So grab some good Irish whiskeys today, share them with your friends and family. It's a category of whiskey that just keeps getting better and growing more and more. Cheers, see you next time right here on The Mash and Drum. Have some lucky charms. <laughs>